Dear viewers, recently something interesting happened in the aviation space. The country flew its first commercial flight from Pune to New Delhi powered by sustainable aviation fuel or ethanol blended aviation jet fuel. You see, India becomes signatory to carbon offsetting and reduction scheme for international aviation. Now that calls for compulsory blending of aviation fuel from 2027. Even at just 1% blending of SAF, the requirement for SAF will be 14 crore liters. Now SAF is a second stage fuel and it is produced from ethanol. This itself would create an additional requirement of 28 crores liters per annum of ethanol. So why is this interesting and relevant for an investment related video? Well, that's because today I'm going to talk about a specific company in the biofuel economy that has enabled this feat and could be a big beneficiary of this mandate. Now, this is just one of the opportunities emerging in the bioenergy economy space. We all know how ethanol blending in petrol has created a new investment theme in the stock markets. With SAF into picture, this theme could create additional triggers. Already, the target to have 20% ethanol blending in petrol has been pre from 2030 to 2025, and we have barely come halfway to that target, targeting 12% blending by the end of this year. This alone requires additional ethanol volumes of around 643 crore liters by 2026. The government also targets to have a 5% biodiesel blend in diesel sales by 2030. The raw materials for these biofuels are plant-based, sugar, starch, grains, and even forest residue and recycled oils and fats. And then there is plan to install 5,000 compressed biogas plants by 2030. India is quite serious about its biofuel economy. Not just because of the environmental reasons, but also for the sake of security and self-reliance. The country could save $4 billion per annum with just ethanol blending targets and petrol. At G20, India announced formation of Global Biofuel Alliance with Brazil and US as founding members. This will enable tech transfer and will mobilize investments and implementation of these projects. Now, there are many sugar companies and OMCs that have taken these projects seriously. Do check the link below the video for the names of these companies. But then there is one specific player, Traj Industries, that I want to cover in detail today that could be a great enabler and beneficiary of biofuel theme and deserves to be on your watch list. Its business can be divided into five segments. First, bioenergy, which is primarily ethanol. It has 10% market share in global ethanol production plant industry, excluding China. In India, it has 50 to 55% market share in ethanol plants. This is further divided into 1G and 2G ethanol plants. 1G plants use sugar and starch as raw material, while 2G ethanol plant is a relatively new in-house tech that uses other raw materials like agri waste. Second, high purity system, wherein company provides systems and technology to produce high quality water for clients in pharma, biotech, cosmetics, and wellness center. It also finds application in semiconductor industry. In fact, the company booked its first order in the semiconductor industry for the ultra high purity water in the year 2023 itself. Third, critical process equipments for use in oil and gas, pet chem, fertilizer, and chemical industry. Four, wastewater treatment plants for industrial sector and zero liquid discharge. Fifth, technology and plant installation for brewery and beverage industry. Now, Praj has over 70% of the market share in the brewery market in India. It has also installed projects in Africa and Southeast Asia. Now, do note that the company is not into the business of selling ethanol or producing the fuels, but in the business of offering technology, process, and equipments and plants that can help companies to produce these fuels in a commercially viable manner by meeting the clean energy targets as well. Raj has around 300 patents and its R&D team has over 90 technologists. In fact, it is a knowledge partner in developing national biochem policy. For financial reporting purposes, it divides its business into three segments. 74% of its revenue come from the bioenergy segment, 19% from the engineering and 7% from the high purity water system. Its customers range across industry, those who are putting up ethanol or biofuel capacities or upgrading them. These include sugar companies, breweries, OMC, or any industry which is interested in installing equipments for zero liquid discharge or wastewater treatment. It also works with EPC companies in the field of oil and gas, fertilizer, and natural gas. Over 40% of the business is from repeat customers. 
The company has a presence in over 100 countries. Its latest reported order book stands at Rs 38 billion, of which 22% is from export market, as compared to 34 billion at the end of FY23. Now, apart from incremental ethanol requirement that will lead to fresh capital outlays and business opportunities for the company, what interests me most about Raj is its futuristic mindset. You see, its order book that I just mentioned does not include five CBG projects with a potential value of 5 billion. Remember, by 2030, the plan is to install 5,000 such plants. Even a fraction of this investment could unleash a huge opportunity for the company. Now, apart from the biofuels, the next big opportunity for Praj could be in renewable chemical and materials or RCM. The company is working on developing technologies for production of RCM. A key focus area is bioplastics and specialty products with usage in auto, packaging, furniture, construction, agriculture and food sector. The company is setting up a demo plan for polylactic acid to accelerate the commercialization of bioplastics. What's more, the company is setting up an ETCA or Energy Transition and Climate Action Facility with focus on clean technology with 100 crore capex, which is likely to be ready by the end of FY24. As per the management, that alone could generate revenue up to Rs 15 billion over a base of Rs 35 billion in FY23. Coming to financials, its revenue and net profit have grown at a CAGR or average annual growth rate of 30% and 43% every year over the last five years. The debt to equity ratio is nil. The cash and liquid assets at the end of first quarter were at 8 billion. The receivable days have been coming down and the return ratios have shown a significant improvement with return on equity and return on capital employed at 24% and 32% at the end of FY23. The stock is trading at a PE of 41 times versus a 5-year median of 39 times and at a PEG of price earnings to growth of 0.8, which is less than 1. All in all, I think Praj Industries deserves to be on your watch list if you believe in the theme of clean energy and biofuel economy. Now do note that this is not a stock recommendation. You must do your own research with regards to risks as well as for margin of safety in the valuation. These risks which are related to the business could include regulatory risks, you know, if the government slows down on the clean energy and blending targets or alternative technologies coming up that could be more viable and effective. And most importantly, a slowdown in the capital investments or capex by the end customers. Do note that the Prash does not provide these fuels, but the plants and technology to get these fuels. Hence, the business fortunes are linked to the capex plans of the end customers. So on that note, I would like to conclude this discussion. Let me know your feedback. If you found it useful, do press the like button and share it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.